I really think that John and I and the rest of the production team at the outset recognized the enormous tasks that we would have in trying to make a movie based on something that's treasured by so many people. We found a note. What did it say? It said, who is John Galt? My name's Harmon Caslo. I am the producer of Atlas Shrugged with John Agliolaro. A Tiger transcontinental freight train has crashed and derailed. Well, this movie is based on the first part of the book about the character development of Atlas Shrugged, the people that I put in her story to describe her philosophy. But this movie, I think, really comes across as a very empowering movie for women. It's about a, about a woman who takes on a lot of forces working against her. We're not going to allow you to run that train. You can do whatever you want with your men, Mr. Brady, but that train will run if I have to drive the damn thing myself. And it really sets a good foundation for the balance of the book where it gets into more of the political and philosophical content that, that people really ascribe to when they think of the book Atlas Shrugged. What is wrong with the world? Who is John Galt? I want to tell Dagny's story and I have to introduce her world. My name is Brian O'Toole and I'm the screenwriter on Atlas Shrugged Part 1. I broke down the first part and I tried to find the basis of it, uh, some skeleton. And so to me this, this was the underdog story. Nobody's used rear to metal. Why do we have to be the first? This is the story of Dagny Taggart who just discovered there's been a major wreck on one of her lines and it was actually to Ellis Wyatt, the last supplier of oil in the country. And because of their incompetence, or her brother's incompetence, he's now going with a, a competing line. We'll find a way to fix this. You and your brother try to undermine me, or go to the government. Maybe way. you should let me explain. Maybe you should let me finish speaking. And her job now is to save that company by getting that line fixed. So she goes outside the box and she finds somebody who's created a new metal, something that's stronger than steel, lighter than steel, cheaper than steel. Even though everyone around her is telling her you can't use it, it's not proven, she steps up and she says, no, I'm going to use it. And I'm gambling your new metal can do what you say it can. I'm staking my business on it. And so she decides, along with Hank Reardon, in order to save my company, my family business, I'm going to have to abandon it. I'm going to take a leap and start my own company. Which pisses off everybody that's been against them all along. If we're going to bring Reardon down, we should do it from the inside. The whole theme of the story is really human evil. If you double-cross me, I will destroy you. And human evil spawns from good intentions. I mean, the, the government isn't, isn't malicious. They think what they're doing is right. A federal tax will be applied to all steel mills. They don't realize their consequences. They are not getting my medal. That's human evil. And that, to me, was what the government in this book was doing. That's the theme that I'm going to take through the whole story, all three parts. 